The king came to the throne by way of the death of his brother, Edward IV, in 1483. An unexpected death, the very young age of his fortune, perhaps by a stroke. He had two young sons, aged 12 and 9 respectively, the elder of which, the Prince of Wales, becomes Edward V. However, this is the 15th century, and politics plays a big part. Richard, Duke of Gloucester, the brother of the dead king, becomes the protector of the young king. However, the death of the Prince of Wales in 1484, and the subsequent declaration Richard had for the Duke of Clarence's to become his heir, sets a pace, a conflict, a conflict which now comes to its conclusion. Henry Tudor is in the wings, the Earl of Richmond. He sees the crown as his own. 6th of July, 1483. Richard has assembled his men here on this field. Originally recorded the field of Reedsmoor. Originally the Battle of Reedsmoor. It's only subsequently in the 16th century we know it as we know it today as the Battle of Bosworth. You can see the king there, a proud king on horseback, splendid in his royal livery, followed by his standard bearer, rallying his men. But here, entering onto the field, Tudor's men have now reached us. It is 8 o'clock in the morning. But first onto the field are the Stanleys. This household has not yet committed to battle. This household has not shown an allegiance to either party, Tudor or Richard. I'm sure the King will send forward heralds, maybe himself, to parley with them, to plead with them, to support them. However, it is known that Richard also had Thomas Lord Stanley's son in his possession and threatened his execution should he not join with them on this day. Such are the tactics of medieval warfare. The reply from Thomas Lord Stanley was simply, I have other sons. And so you can hear them parley on the field there. You can hear them discuss the terms. And so whilst decisions are yet to be concluded, Tudor's men now take the field, headed by Oxford, his men wearing their tawny red terracotta, if you have it, liveries. Hand gunners amongst them. And here comes the artillery. Tudor's guns exploding on the field. These men set out on battle 800 yards apart from each other, but as they get closer, they become with range of these guns. These guns drawn from the Tower of London. This is not a good start to the battle for Henry Tudor. His commanders pull back his men. And here is Henry Tudor into the field, followed by his standard bearer, the green and the white, with the red dragon on it. Henry Tudor himself in metal plate armour. He relies on Oxford to steer the strategy of his battle. You can see now the households have spread across the battlefield. They've been employing new tactics. Trying to advance upon Richard's static spot on the top of the ridge with columns of attack. Like all medieval armies, they could seem to be to the untrained eye to be nothing more than a rabble. For the last 30 years, this conflict has pursued. We know it today as the Wars of the Roses. And still Henry holds back. You see him on his horse, holding back, surveying the battle from behind. And in the battle goes, you see their swords wailing in the air. The clash of steel. This must have been a terrifying point of the battle for these men. In they come in the blue and murray Gloucester household. And he still surveys his battle. Richard, no doubt, along with his 
household names are winning. Oh, and it looks like the decision has been made by the Stanleys. The Stanleys seem to be forming themselves into some form of battle formation, facing Richard Phil. And they commit. They advance on Richard's men. This is a decisive point of battle. Richard will recognise that now the odds are even. 10,000 men apiece on this battlefield. The Stanleys have turned against him. But this is a warrior king. He will be now thinking he needs to reach a very quick decision as to how to progress his battle. Henry now protected by his men forming a shelter around him. This shelter using spears, bills, pikes. At an angle, rooted on the ground, butchered, made steady to repel against cavalry attack. But he needs a new tactic to bring this battle to a close. He needs a new tactic to see off once and for all. Henry. You see now that Richard has dismounted. He can see that his cavalry attack will do no better. So he will go in on foot. Rallying his men. Crying for their support. He is with his own household. He uses his sword to hack and to slash. To find his way through. Yet Tudor's men are upon him. Tudor's men are upon the king. He is outnumbered vastly. He cries treason, treason, treason. He is Gentlemen, boys and girls, this is the Battle of Bosworth. This is how it comes to an end. The king is down. You'll see those weapons hack into his lifeless body. The king is dead. These men of Tudor raise their hands in victory. The king is dead. This day is over. This day is over. All but for one task. The task to present the crown drawn from Richard's own helm and present it to the new king. England has a new king. The king is Henry Tudor. The first of the line of Tudors, he holds aloft the crown. England reaches a new era. The wars and roses may not be finished. Skirmishes will continue for some time. But today we have on this field, with his men on bended knee, a new king. King Henry VII of that name.